In a time of war and conquest, they were the mightiest military power of their age. A force that vanquished armies, toppled empires. A dynasty which expanded to become the first great kingdom of Asia Minor. A state built on the most advanced legal system of its time. A civilization that formed the cultural link between the ancient East and West. A language that was the earliest example of all Indo-European languages. A mythology that influenced Greek and Roman literature, as well as the Bible. Kings that fought the pharaohs in the greatest battles of history. Defiant, proud men and women who ruled the Near East. An empire that changed the ancient world. The Hittites. This battle is fought between the two superpowers of the day. On one side is the Egyptian army commanded by the legendary Ramesses II. Confronting Ramesses is a force that instills fear in all its enemies, but in time will become only an obscure footnote in the pages of history. A civilization forgotten for 3,000 years, until stunning archaeological discoveries will mark its rebirth. Asia Minor, today called Anatolia, a region covering the central and eastern part of Turkey. It is a land surrounded by Greece in the west, Iraq and Iran in the east, Syria in the south, and Russia in the north. In 1834, Charles Felix Marie Texier, a French archaeologist, was exploring in central Anatolia. Near the small town of Boascoi, Texier discovered the ruins of a large ancient city. The mysterious city contained many walls and reliefs with strange hieroglyphic inscriptions. But at the time, the find generated little interest in the archaeological community. Forty years later, reliefs, statues and stamp seals with similar hieroglyphics began turning up all around Anatolia and Syria. The intriguing discoveries pointed to a civilization with a common script and vast territory stretching from western Turkey to northern Syria. In 1876, Archibald Henry Says gave a groundbreaking speech to the Society of Biblical Archaeology in London. Says claimed that he had established a connection among all the monuments and was able to partially decipher one of the stone reliefs. He argued that the inscriptions belonged to the Hittites. The academic community was stunned. Apart from a few passing references in the Bible, the Hittites were unknown to scholars. According to the Old Testament, they were just one among many tribes present in ancient Palestine. The great surprise of the, of the day was, of course, that this obscure tribe named in the Bible should have covered such a large territory and with their inscriptions and their political power. Once it was believed 
that the Hittites might have actually governed a large kingdom located between ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Aegean, all eyes turned to Boaskoi. An excavation team led by Hugo Winkler and Theodore McCready began digging in Boaskoi in 1906. The team quickly unearthed many tablets written in cunei form, a script formed by pressing a reed stylus into clay to make wedge-shaped signs. These symbols stood for syllables and words that were read left to right. Many of the texts were composed in Akkadian, the international language of ancient times. Akkadian had already been deciphered, so scholars could immediately read these tablets. Just a few weeks into the dig, the workers excavated a remarkable document, a clay tablet with a text referring to a so-called unpleasantness between the Egyptians and the Hittites. Closer examination revealed that the text was actually a peace treaty between the pharaoh Ramesses II and Hattusheli III of the Hittites, signed after the Battle of Kadesh. This made the treaty 3,000 years old. It was a very important peace treaty and probably one of the very earliest, if not the earliest, peace treaty in the world. And as such, you can still see it today uh, exhibited in the entrance to the Security Council of the United Nations in New York. 